you, Jesus. Thank you, Steve. Oh, blessed be the mighty name praise of Jesus. God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live, and I will lift up my hands in thy name. Amen. Amen. The psalmist there, which was David, uh, but he's mentioned, early will I seek thee. That's right. Early will I seek thee. He, he's saying, I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to beat the devil up. Amen. And I'm going I'm to get my day started off right. Amen. You don't want to have your days to be powerless. Right, right. It's not the will of a saint of God to have a powerless day. Amen. Right. Amen. You're supposed to be powerful every day. That's Amen. right. The blessings and of the Lord are renewed day by day. So if we seek him early, we will find him. Amen. Hebrews 6 and 12 says that ye may not, uh, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit promises. And so <clears throat> uh, don't be slothful. In many other words, don't put it off. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't put it on the back burner. Well. Don't make it a maybe. Make sure you schedule yourself 
to be able to seek God early. Amen. Seek God early. Uh, many reasons for that. <clears throat> Some of them, one of the main reasons is you want to crucify your flesh as soon as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. We wake up every day and our flesh is ready to sin. Right. Yep. And so we need to crucify it first thing in the morning. Amen. That's and, good. and get your day started off right because we are spiritual people. Amen. And we walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. Amen. So we need to subdue the flesh early in the morning. Oh, that's good. Amen. Put it to an early cross. Yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 7 says, For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we have behaved ourselves disorderly among you. For yourselves, uh, another translation said, For yourselves know how ye ought to imitate us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Another one says, For you, you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. Okay. And um, it's, it's mentioning there um, finding people who have a walk with God that you would want to take note of. A lot of people, you know, in the world, everybody follows after the examples of different people. You know, the athletes follow athletes and the actors follow actors and the people that want to act up just follow the athletes and the actors. And uh, everybody <laughs> just finds somebody they want to be like. You know, that's why it's, it, it's, it's so important, hallelujah, uh, fathers and mothers, how they carry themselves because their children are looking to them as for examples of how they're supposed to live in this world. And so um, those examples, well, I, if I'm going to be a Christian, if I'm going to be a Pentecostal apostolic Christian, I want to follow them that pray. Right. Amen. People that have powerful prayer lives or people that have powerful results of the things that they do, you can tell that they've been in the prayer room. Yeah. Right. You can always sense a prayer warrior. You can always feel uh, the spirit of a person, hallelujah, put themselves in the presence of God often and deeply and with everything that's in them on a daily walk. There's always something flowing from them. Amen. 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 I, I want to be like those people. I want, yeah. I want to be like those who you can tell that been to the prayer room. Where every time you're observing them, they're coming from the prayer room. Mm -hmm. um, when I first became a Christian, I used to watch those that coming down from the upstairs. We had a balcony in our church, and they would come down from upstairs, and you could just feel the, the presence of God Amen. just coming from them, and, and they were ready for something. That, that's the one you want to run to for a question. And when you see them, they was always the first ones up to worship. Yeah. They were always the first one, hallelujah, behind the pastor. Right. They were always the first ones, you know, when, when there was an idea or there was something that came from the word of God that was strong and powerful. They was the first ones excited. Amen. You know, because they kept their flesh subdued. You can tell that prayer wasn't just only at church. Right. But they would come to church early and pray. Okay. Right. But also, um, you could tell it was evident in their life. You know, anytime you came near them, you would feel that fragrance of prayer oh, on them. You know, they were dying daily. That's the kind of church that we need to have. Yes. We want the world to see, hallelujah, the glory of God moving from us. Amen. And so that they can desire it. Yes. You know, and so, so they'll, they'll, they'll talk all of the craziness they talk. But then when something serious come on, they can get away from everybody else. They're looking for you. Right. Right. They're going to ask you the question. Yeah. Uh, I have found that many times when people that it seem like they don't pay you much attention, but they start talking to you and trying to get along with you, they get ready to ask for prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they know your personal prayer. They know that you have faith in God. Yes. They can feel it from you. They can see it. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's the kind of saints we want to be. We want to be those that are drawn to God. Amen. I want to be a magnet Amen. for God. Praise God. So that people will desire, hallelujah, to know him. Amen. Praise God. And so, <clears throat> so we should follow the example of those in the Bible who were spiritually successful. God used many different, pe di different kinds of people in the Bible who came from many different walks of life. Some were educated. 
Others were ignorant and unlearned. There was a common thread that ran through the lives of the men and women God used. This pattern was prayer. Amen. Every man or woman of God used in the scripture prayed. In fact, rose up early to pray and seek God. Examples, Jesus rose up a great while before day. The apostles gave themselves to the word of God in prayer. Okay? Those men that were used in the New Testament, it was evident of their prayer lives. Jesus was always looking to try to find somewhere to be alone with the Father so he could pray. Amen. You know, because anytime you come and you issue that much of yourself out, yes. as he was feeding multitudes and feeding um, all the flock that followed after him and the multitudes that followed him, and then also standing up to all the enemies, mm -hmm. hallelujah, and the hypocrites. Okay? Right. And so, you, you know, you, you need power to stand up to the hypocrites. Okay? And so that's going to come if you spend some time of your day in the presence of God. Amen. You must. Okay? Uh, and Zephaniah 3 and 5 said, The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning does he, does he bring his judgment to life. So in the morning, you can get information and judgment and understanding from God in the morning. Hallelujah. Not only is God pouring out his blessings in the early morning, hallelujah, but your mind is fresh then. Okay? That's why they always, the, the scientists say the greatest meal that you eat is actually your breakfast. Amen. Even though we try to make up for it at dinner. <laughs> we just eat to our heart's content. We, we get something in the morning. But that thing that's in the morning is what's going to strengthen you through the day. Right. Okay, and so you need to get with God and get spiritually fed early in the morning. It's going to make your day a whole lot easier yes. if the flesh is subdued and the spirit is alive. Yes. Right. Right. Early as possible. Praise God. Good. Good. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to be hungry in the morning for God. Amen. More than my natural food, as one man said. Amen. Praise God. And so... <clears throat> Morning means that that time when night is turning to day, prior to the rising of the sun, the end of night, not the time before noon. Okay, um, the word morning was mentioned 214 times in the Old Testament, and every time it meant the same thing. Okay, and so uh, in other words, you know, after the midnight hour, going on into the to the beginning of the day, that's the real morning. That's right. Okay, not 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's that very, very early time, usually before the sun is up or right after. Okay, that's when you want to start seeking the Lord. Amen. You want to start seeking the Lord because you, you want to die daily. You want to get away from all of you that you've been sleeping and having crazy dreams. Yeah, right. You want God to clean up your mind, clean up your heart for the day. Right. right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, you won't have the results that they had in the New Testament with a casual, casual relationship with God. Okay? And so it must come with a commitment. That's why I always say, you know, um, <clears throat> people, you have to plan to pray. Yes. You've got to have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, then the devil is going to steal it. Mm -hmm. Then your nature is going to steal it. Because you can find a whole lot of other things to do in the morning besides talk to God. Yeah. Come on. And you want to start your day off right. If you talk to God first, I guarantee you, the rest of your day is going to be a whole lot easier. Amen. You know, I don't know how many times when I have missed early prayer, then probably about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll be thinking, man, I wish I had prayed this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I had got up a little bit earlier, started a little bit longer. Hallelujah. Because the devil don't sleep. No, he doesn't. And life don't stop. Right. right. And so you, you got things you're going to face the minute you get up. There's things waiting for you. So you might as well turn everything over to God Amen. right now. Amen. So he can order your steps. Amen. You can walk powerfully. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 24 
prayer. When you get there, say amen. 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 Okay, Brother Trey, you was first. Read verse 11 and 12. 2 Samuel 24, 11 and 12. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I'll offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. All right. So David got up early. Okay. Now, excuse me, the word of the Lord came to David early. Amen. Okay. He got up early to see God in prayer. Um, he had a very serious situation at that particular time. And so he sought God, and God spoke to the man of God. Amen. Okay, so how, how powerful it is when you beat the devil to the punch. Amen. Okay, Praise or God. you beat the problem to the punch. Okay, yes. He knew that by the things that had recently happened that it was going to be a rough time coming that day. Mm -hmm. And he got up early. And he must have sought God pretty good. Because yeah. God woke up the man of God and said, I got a message for him. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I'm quite sure any pastor, hallelujah, would, would love it. If, uh, if the Lord would give him a warning early in the morning. Right. <laughs> if, the, if God would come and talk to him, so-and-so is praying. So-and-so needs some counsel. This is what you need to tell him. Amen. You know, uh, I know I would never have a problem with that instead of me finding out afterwards. Right. And then get caught with my mouth hanging open. Right. Well, I don't know what to say now. I think we better go pray. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a whole lot better. If you don't already pray, and God has already moved. He already has an answer for you. Amen. Praise right. God. Praise God. So see God early, and he will tell your pastor what you need. The word of God can come to us directly. Okay? Psalm chapter 143 and 8. You will find direction for your life consistently through early morning prayer. Verse 8 says, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I shall walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. And so this psalmist, hallelujah, he's heading everything off. Amen. Okay. He's asking the Lord to cause everything to go right for him. Hallelujah. He's praying early in the morning. Okay? He's putting his trust in God so God can tell him which way to walk. Amen. Amen. Not only is that powerful, that's wise. Amen. Hallelujah. To, to get yourself prepared for the day that you're going to go Amen. through. Because we don't know what a day is going to bring. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, 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 you, we have great plans and we have great desires and we wake up, we think everything will go just the way we planned it. And Satan may have a different plan. Right. And God may even have a more better plan. But God can prepare you yes. for whichever is going to happen right. if you seek him early. Amen. Right. If you seek him early. Proverbs 8, 17, 8 and 17 says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Amen. Not might find me. Even when I have a tough day, Usually if I have sought the Lord in that particular day, I will feel good about anything else that goes on. Amen. When it comes, hallelujah, when something difficult comes, hallelujah, my faith is already in the Lord. Yeah. I say, well, oh well, God's going to help me through that. Amen. But when I don't pray and I don't seek after God, yeah. then frustration comes. Yeah. And you find yourself looking for somewhere to pray mm. and wishing that you had prayed early. And started your day off with power. Praise God. All right. <clears throat> Blessing number three. Every morning, God gives revelation and explains his word. Morning means the time prior to the rising of the sun. I already mentioned that every morning, God is showing us his ways, shining light on his promises. Okay. God is instructing and teaching every morning. If we don't show up, we'll miss out. So it's just like as we, our children, you know, we go to school early. We want to get that brain toward, toward that brain um, toward learning as soon as possible. 
Okay? And so that's the same way we want to do as we walk with God. We want to start learning as soon as possible. Okay? Because life is never going to sit back and wait for you. And it's a lot better. Hallelujah. If you've already put everything in the hands of God, God will prepare you for the day that's about to happen. Amen. God will give you wisdom and understanding. I know some of my best ideas have came to me early in the morning, right after prayer. I didn't have prayer, and I'm walking away from prayer on my way to work, and then the answers come. Ideas come. A lot of times, it's pre-direction um, for things that are going to happen. Okay? Yeah. And so, uh, but because you saw God early, God got you prepared for that day. Yeah. I tell you what, people don't think so, but the Lord loves to be dependent on. Amen. All right. Yes, That's the relationship he wants. Yes. Hallelujah. That we come after him as little children. Hallelujah. So he can rise us up Amen. to give him glory. Because yes. when people know that you depend on God, then they're more likely to want to depend on God. Right. They can't figure out why you're successful, why you're happy, why everybody else is sad, and why everybody's complaining. You're walking in confidence. Yes. It's because you know you're in the hands of the Lord. Yes. Yes. And when they get in those situations, that's why you're the one they're going to come and right. talk to in secret. You're the one they're going to want to have private counsel with. Okay? Amen. Because they can feel the confidence that you have. Oh. Hallelujah. Uh, your education don't always make people confident. Right. Hallelujah. There's a lot of very well-educated people who are nervous wrecks. Yeah. You know, a lot of heavy educated and talented people are the first ones to commit suicide. Because they're depending on themselves. On themselves, excuse me, and, and, and not depending on the power and the mercy of God. Amen. The Bible says God's mercies are new every day. Amen. Hallelujah. We might as well be the first ones to get it. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> I want to be first. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so. <clears throat> If you desire to be used of God, it's important to pay close attention when you come across the words, the kingdom of heaven is like. That means God is about to share a principle of his kingdom. Okay, um, He's going to show us how his kingdom operates. Okay, You always have an idea of what's going on if you seek God early. He's going to show you how his kingdom works. Okay, While the rest of the world is trying to show you how the world works. You know, it's better to get up in the morning and read something out of the Word rather than get up in the morning and read the newspaper. Yeah. Amen. You got all day to get the bad news. Right. You might as well get the good news before oh, you hear the bad news. Yeah. <laughs> you may need that good news after you hear the bad news. <laughs> right. We are living in a world full of fear, frustration, yeah. and strife, and revenge, and confusion. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to get to a place where I have a God that's confident. Yeah. That knows the end from the beginning. Amen. And has the power, hallelujah, to change the direction of a day. Amen. Has the power to change the direction of your life. Amen. Has the power to move you away from where everybody else is. Yeah. You can remove fear. Fear is not of God. Amen. God don't want, want us walking in a fearful Amen. lifestyle. Amen. Hallelujah. Fearing those things that come up on the earth. Right. Hallelujah. Our hand and our hope is in the Lord. Amen. Who made heaven and earth. And so God don't want us to be fearful. He'll show you what the kingdom works like. Matthew 20 and 1 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. So God goes to the labor pool and hires people early in the morning. See, that, that parable will show you something. God's looking out early in the morning. Who can I use today? Amen. Who can I put a word in today? Yeah. Who can I get some glory? Oh, there you go. There you go, Sister Michelle. She's up early. She, she's talking to me. I guess I'll give her an assignment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There you go, Brother Rose. I guess I'll give him an assignment today Amen. since he came to meet me early. You're hired. You know, and so God is looking for those people that want to serve him first. Come on, yeah. He don't want the type of servant he had to pull into servanthood. Right, right. <laughs> Come on, I need you to do something. Come on. Come on. That's right. you know, but those that have sought him and want to please him, oh, it's easy to get a word from the Lord when you're seeking his face and relationship. When you're letting him know that you're available Amen. to be used. 
It's whatsoever, you know, whatever your will is, Lord, that's what I want to be doing. Amen. And you've gotten all of the, the, the flesh off of you, all the ideas of the flesh and all the mind of the flesh and the things of the world off of you. And you're, you're ready to be a servant. Amen. 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 I want to be that. I want to be that one that God is looking for. Yes. I want to be the one that God is looking for. First Chronicles nine verse. Um, First Chronicles nine. Brother Rose, why don't you get First Chronicles nine and read verses twenty six and twenty seven for us? Twenty-six and twenty-seven. Twenty-six and twenty-seven. Okay. For these Levites and four chief pointers were in their offset office and were over the chambers and treasury treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged around about the house of God, because the charge was upon them, and the opening thereof every morning pertained to them. Okay. So what's going to happen in the house of God pertains to us. Amen. Okay. And remember, we're a holy nation. We're royal priesthood. Okay, so everything that's going to happen in the house of God depends on the prayers of the saints. We, we prepare the atmosphere for God to move in our lives, in our, in, in our services, and in the lives of the others that we're praying for. Uh, and and, and let, me, let me tell you this, you know, I, I feel like somebody's getting this in their head. Don't think that your prayers are in vain. Amen. Your labor is not vain in the Lord. You're, you're not wasting your efforts. Okay, um, <clears throat> even when you're not seeing an instant result, you know, the Bible shows us that in heaven, there's a place in there, a bottle there, where those prayers are being saved up. That's right. All God right. doesn't forget your prayers. Amen. He still might be doing things along to his timing. That's right. But he is listening. Mm -hmm. He is collecting them. Amen. And he does use them to pour them out on the wrath of Satan. Man. Excuse me, point them out as rap on Satan. Okay, he will use your prayers to defeat Satan's kingdom. Man. Remember, he don't even have the keys to it. That's right. Man. You have the keys to it. Yeah. You can come in and make a deposit in that safety deposit box oh, of God. God. Right. You can always get in Amen. if you got a willingness to pray and to seek God's face. He's going to take care of you, but you can change how things um, are going to come out. In a different translation, it says, but the four principal gatekeepers who were Levites were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and the treasures in the house of God. They were spending the night stationed around the house of God because they had to guard it, and they had charge of the key for opening it every morning. And so we open the doors of blessings for others when we get up early and pray Amen. and prepare what's going to happen in the house of God. Amen. 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 We, we, we need to increase. We need to increase. Yes. Hallelujah. And I guess we all ought to fight a little more. We get here a little earlier in the prayer time and get, hallelujah, get the devil pushed out and the Amen. angels poured in. Amen. So that the service and the place is prepared. Yes. Hallelujah. I know I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm not picking at nobody. We all need it. Hallelujah. Get a little stronger about prayer. But that's Amen. that's where God's going to take us next. Right. 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 Hallelujah. And we, and we have a more elder-oriented church. Hallelujah. We're going to need that prayer yes. and that power and those standards of holiness Amen. when these young people get in here. Amen. Because they're going to be looking to us to see how to walk when they get here. Amen. Because the minute somebody young get in here, hallelujah, they're coming out of this world, the devil's going to trouble them. Right. They're going to want, uh, the devil's going to try to convince them this is old funny duddy stuff. Right. Hallelujah. And they're, they're, they're going to wrestle with them. But when they see the constant example, yes. and when they feel the constant Amen. presence of God, hallelujah, it, it'll continue on. When they leave here, it'll be going with them. And when they sit in their home, the presence of God will still be talking to them, Amen. still be pricking them. Hallelujah. That's what happened to, to Paul. No matter what he did to them Christians, that anointing kept flowing out and piercing him and piercing him and piercing him. 
You know, until finally, hallelujah, those prayers got to the place where the Lord came and talked to him himself. Amen. And that's what I want to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. I like what somebody tells me, man, God's been talking to me. That's if I know I've been praying for him. I know God is using my prayers for a stick pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He pierces some stuff. He said, you got to get rid of that. You got to be like, you know, you got to be like Brother Walter. You know, you got you to you do like the other saints of God. That's right. Don't you want some of that? Hallelujah. That's what God wants. That's going to happen if we load ourselves with the weapons of our warfare and prayer. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And so uh, it's important. Every morning when you come to the presence of God, he will put into your hand the key for opening up the chambers of God. You can go into any place that needs to be opened. Deliverance, miracles, revival, salvation for family, revelations, gifts of the spirit, healing, and other things. Okay, The key to opening the areas, get there early, become a chief porter Amen. for God. Amen. Porter is the one that comes and presents everything to everybody else. Amen. So when we get there early, we, we beat the devil to the punch. Yeah. We beat the world to the punch. Jeez. Hallelujah. It's going to change. Hallelujah. What's happening in people's lives. Amen. God, God's going to deal with their conscience. Amen. God's going to deal with them about their sins. We, we're asking God to move on them. We're asking God to save them. Amen. We're asking God to do the things that we find out about them. Because, you see, there's one thing that a lot of people don't talk to a whole lot talk about a whole lot, but in the scriptures, when the apostles that went out, the most powerful thing it says, and the Lord working with them. Yes. Amen. And confirming the word with signs and wonders. Amen. Okay, we, we're a vessel for God. The Lord's gonna work with you. And I tell you what, when you learn to work with the Lord in prayer, it'll put a boldness in your witness. Amen. You won't be afraid to talk to anybody. The right. power of God is going to overwhelm the power of fear. Yes. The love of God hallelujah, will cause you. You know, you can't stop a man in love. That's right. That's right. That's right. They'll go through all sorts of things and dangers and anything. When they, when they fall in love, it don't make no difference. They, they can hide them up in the castle, <laughs> put armed guards. They're going to find a way to climb in there. You know, and that's what happened when we fall in love with God. Yeah. And we have the power of God in a relationship with God. We don't care if they don't laugh. We don't care. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be teased. We don't care how many other churches have been talking to them. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't care about the embarrassment. Hallelujah. Talking about God at a high moment. Right. We just know God loves me and God loves them. And I want them to know hallelujah, how much God loves them. Yes. Yes. When you get connected to God, God is love. Hallelujah. And that love will cause you to overcome the fear of witness. Overcome the fear, hallelujah, and be bold. God has a bold love for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, Joshua chapter 3. GW, why don't you read that for us? Verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 7. Joshua chapter 3, 1 through 7. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they were removed, removed from the Shittim and came to Jordan. And he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officer went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove your remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. Mm. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, 
take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Oh, Amen. Well, so you see here, as they kept doing things in order, and kept bringing order into their lives of the things of God, doing exactly the way that God wanted them to. And as Joshua um, rose early, okay, to do the ordinances of God, okay, he rose early because he saw Moses rising early. Yeah. And so he copied him. He said, it must be something to that. And then he got to the place where he would allow Moses to go nowhere that he didn't go. You know, when, when Moses went up on the mount, he went up on the mount. That's right. But commandment that said, when Moses went up on the mount, let no other man come up on the mount. Amen. Okay, but he knew he had that relationship with God that he could go up on the mount. Mm -hmm. He was that hungry. Mm -hmm. He was so hungry, he said, I don't know, I'm, I'm going where God is at. If God slay me, he's slay me. But I got to go where God is at. Because I see the man of God, Moses, going up there where, where God is at. That's where I'm going to be at in my future. I'm going to be able to go where God is at. Right. That's the attitude that we got to have. Right. Hallelujah. I'm so hungry for you, God. I'm, I'm coming no matter. I don't care if nobody else comes. Come Everybody else may fear, but I know you love me. Yeah. So I'm coming up there where you at. I want to hear instructions for myself. Yeah. And so that's why he was selected. And then God began to magnify him in the sight of Israel. And so as you begin to uh, seek the Lord with all of your heart and and, and be in early morning prayer and become fearless to go before God. God is preparing you to lead something. Amen. I got a few amens. Amen. Amen. Almost and I hope so. Hallelujah. God is preparing you to lead something. Right. When you're the one that seeks him early. When you're the one that seeks him first. Amen. When you become fearless in your relationship. Okay. Amen. And so that's what God is looking for. Yes. And so uh, when he when he that day he started rising early to pray, that's when God began to magnify. Him. God doesn't wait until you have been praying early in the morning for years. He starts working the day you begin. Amen. So if you wanted to get started, get started on prayer. Start seeking after God. <clears throat> so Joshua took Jericho by starting early in the morning. About the break of day, they began marching around the city. He took the city by getting involved in spiritual warfare early in the morning. Okay? And they did the same thing at Ai. Okay? They started early in the morning and went after Ai. Okay? And so there's power in the things that God likes to do in the morning. Amen. If we want to take our city, we must follow biblical principles. We must do what people who were mag might be used of God did in the Bible. Okay? And they sought God early. Okay, and often. Okay, and often. And one of the things you, that you can put into your life, we all get down times. We get times when there's nothing to do. And when you ain't got nothing to do, go somewhere and seek after God for a little while. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It, it, don't, it don't hurt to, to have extra strength. Okay, I know that about professional athletes and professionals that do things. You know, they, they have a regular routine. But when they ain't got nothing to do, well, you know, it ain't going to hurt me to work out an extra 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or it ain't going to hurt me to go and sing that song a few more times. Right. You know, or, or, to, or, or to study that, that paper one more time again before I present it. Okay. We should be that way with prayer. Right. You know, when there's nothing to do, there is something to do. Amen. Give that time to God. Amen. Because life and the devil don't steal enough of your time as it is. Yeah. Okay? And so take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you'd be surprised how pleased God will be Amen. if you do those things. Okay? Blessing number six, we can take our city through consistent sacrificial prayer. Psalms chapter 57 verse 8 says, Awake up, my glory. Awake, saucery and harp. I myself will awake early. Okay? I myself will awake early. Okay? The Psalms is instructing us to do that. Psalm 63 and 1. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Hallelujah. It depends on what you're thirsty for. Right. 
Okay? You, you can find water in God if you really want it. Psalms 119 and 47. I prevented the dying of the morning and cried. I hoped in thy word. Okay? And so before the dying of the morning, before the sun broke, hallelujah, this psalmist was already seeking the Lord. Already getting his day planned out. Praise God. Amen. Isaiah 26 to 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Okay? And so you're going to bring, hallelujah, you're going to bring um, <clears throat> the judgments, hallelujah, in other words, the right judgments into the earth. Amen. Because you sought God early. Amen. That's good. Praise God. They're walking with you. Yes. Amen. And, and so early his judgments will be revealed. Okay. That's when he can reveal them to you. While your mind is fresh. Amen. Genesis. In Genesis 40, Joseph inter interpreted the dream of the butler and the baker. How did, how did he do it? He had been up early in the morning to see. Okay. He got up early. God gave him the understanding so he could speak to these men. Okay? So, so many different ways that God will work and use us, hallelujah, to be vessels unto him. Amen. Principles that work over and over in the Old Testament and New Testament. Seek him early, you will find him. He will bring revelation into your life. Okay? So God will move upon people. Who seek him early. Amen. Amen. I just want a couple more scriptures read and I'm going to be done. Give me um, Genesis chapter 28, verse 18. Anybody? seeking after the Lord while he was walking on his destination. Amen. Okay, and going, going a very long way, seeking that what he was desiring. And so, but when he rested there, he got up early and sought after the Lord and even uh, made a sacrifice, poured, poured oil upon it. He anointed it. You know, it's a good time in the morning to have anointed prayer. Amen. You want to have anointed prayer. Somebody give me Exodus chapter 14. Read from verse 25 to 27. Exodus 14, 25 to 27. And took off their chariot wheels that they drave him heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord is frightened for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to the strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Okay, so you see the power of God is available early in the morning. Amen. Okay, when Moses, he sought to me, he stretched out his rod early in the morning when the enemies was pursuing him and the Lord washed the enemies away. Amen. He washed the enemies away. I wonder how many times we get our enemies washed away when we get up early. Oh, amen. When we see God first. You don't know what's chasing you. Amen. Something trying to chase you down, but because you came and sought the Lord, God swept it away. Amen. Uh, Lord, I'm sending you to the promise. Praise God. <laughs> I got somewhere for you to go. I got Amen. something for you to do. Yeah. Glory to God. In that place where he had read there in Genesis chapter 28, there, I wanted to make a note there where Jacob was um, making that prayer because he had gotten into a place 
where it would be good for us to get to. But he said he made the, the pillows and he lay down in that place and he dreamed the dream and behold a ladder set on the, uh, on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels, here's what I want to say, the angels of, angels of God ascending and descending. Okay, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abram, thy father, and the God of Isaac. Um, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it into thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth will be blessed. Okay. And so, because he was in that right place there in the morning, hallelujah, if you notice, the angels were ascending and descending. They were carrying prayers up and bringing answers down. They were bringing, carrying up requests and bringing power down. That's what, you know, the angels are on the move Amen. early in the morning, waiting for you, Amen. waiting for your request. Hallelujah. So we want to get in that Place. Please stand. Herein is a victory you want to win. Amen. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob wrestled with an angel. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Amen. Okay. When you're seeking a God early, or you start very early and wrestle and wrestle Amen. with the angels of God until you get an answer. Amen. Okay. God will change your name. God will change your destiny. God will empower you. Hallelujah, to do what it is that God is wanting you to do. Amen. He was going to make him uh, the father of many nations. Yes. Okay? But he had to go through that time. Okay, Just because the promise was on him doesn't mean that he didn't have to pray, that he didn't have to seek for it. Right. Just because the hand of God is upon us don't mean that we, don't, we have to stop seeking. Right. We have right. to stop wrestling. Right. You know, sometimes we need to wrestle with an angel. Sometimes we need to wrestle with the things that come against us. So that we can receive the blessings of God. God wants you to be a prayer warrior. Amen. God wants you to be strong. God wants you to wrestle with the things that even come from him. Yes. Until you get the answer that you desire. Because God is building you to, to effect the earth. Amen. Okay. To effect the earth. Not just to live in it. But to effect, to effect the earth in a mighty and powerful way. Praise God. You don't know how many descendants may be connected to your prayers. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. Right. All right. I think we ought to just take about five minutes so so and let's just seek the Lord for a few moments and ask him to draw us to early morning prayer. To speak to us, to empower us, to help us to become the people that God wants us to become.